1917, the Russian Empire collapsed when the then Tsar Nicholas II was abdicated from his throne. This led to the end of the Romanov dynasty. When this collapse occurred, the price of a relatively unheard of alloy of iridium and osmium, known as osmiridium, soared to record highs. Russia was the land where this metal was primarily mined, and after the collapse, Tasmania would take its place in supplying the world with this precious alloy. This video is about the largely forgotten osmiridium rush of Tasmania, and we'll discuss the geology of how osmiridium became deposited in ultramafic rocks. And we'll also look at some of the weird laws Tasmania has regarding mineral acquisition. By 1920, Tasmania held first place in supplying the world's osmiridium. The high demand for it, which was used in various industries including the manufacture of pen nibs, electronic contacts and other high durability applications, drove significant export activity. Funnily enough, prior to the boom, osmiridium was seen as an annoying metal for gold miners. In fact, they were charged a price if their gold contained it. This happened because osmiridium was considered an undesirable impurity when gold was being refined. The added cost of refining the gold to remove the osmiridium led to miners being penalised for its presence. Thus much of it was discarded during alluvial mining, with miners tossing out the alloy in riverbanks whilst mining gold. But this was a very hard task to achieve because osmiridium is actually heavier than gold. So the traditional way of separation through specific gravity in water was impossible to accomplish with this platinum group alloy. And that is why so much of the gold was contaminated with osmiridium in Tasmania. But how did Tasmania become so saturated with osmiridium? Well, the Cambrian 541 to 485.4 million years ago was an intense time for Tasmania. Extremely explosive volcanics roared to life. Earthquakes were tremendous in their scale. And along with this, a rare occurrence of what is known as ultramafic rocks had erupted onto the surface. These ultramafic rocks host the rare platinum group element, and it was being shed from rocks that had become metamorphosed. The main source rocks were dunite and peridotite, and these rocks can be found in the western to middle parts of the Tasmanian landmass with them outcropping in relatively small areas. In Tasmania, the ultramafic rocks, which were already enriched in platinum group elements, underwent metamorphism during the Devonian period, 419.2 to 358.9 million years ago. This metamorphism likely played a role in mobilising and concentrating the osmiridium within specific mineral phases, making them more extractable in alluvial deposits. The osmiridium present in Tasmania was primarily hosted in the original ultramafic rocks and metamorphism helped in redistributing and concentrating these elements in more accessible forms. As a side note, if you enjoy this video, consider liking it to help YouTube promote it to other viewers. If you enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to be notified of every time we upload. We also have a Patreon for anyone who has the means to support the channel. The link to this will be in the description and in the pinned comment down below. The Osmeridian rush of the 1920s primarily focused on alluvial deposits, meaning miners worked the rivers and tributaries to find the alloy. Placid deposits existed en masse in the streams here, as they had been shed from the host rocks through the process of erosion over tens to hundreds of millions of years. There were two primary rushes that occurred to find this alloy. The first began in 1909 when the price of the metal began to rise. The second occurred in 1925, when the discovery of osmiridium occurred in a region known as Adamsville. However, by the 1930s, the boom had largely passed, and the rush for osmiridium had fizzled out. To my knowledge, the host rocks that contained the osmiridium were never crushed and mined to release the alloy, and the rush largely consisted of alluvial mining of placid deposits. So this is the story of a strange rush for a widely unknown platinum group alloy. Tasmania is different to the rest of Australia. It has very stringent rules regarding prospecting and mining which I view as unfair. Only companies that had permission to mine metal were allowed to make a profit from it, as for whatever reason, all minerals in Tasmania belong to the Crown, including gemstones. It's for this reason that Tasmania is still so gold saturated, as there is largely no incentive to mine the metal due to the fact that normal everyday prospectors can't actually sell it legally unless they have very special permissions. If you've ever watched the YouTube channel Tazzy Boys Prospecting, you'll witness an abundance of gold being extracted through sniping, which is when a wetsuit is worn and the rivers are manually inspected for gold to be sniped with a sniffer bottle. If you came to Victoria and tried this, it's likely you'll find very little as, unlike Tasmania, 
miners can legally sell their gold in the state. The same rings true for the rest of Australia. I'm not sure why Tasmania is different, perhaps it's to preserve the ecosystem, but with that being said, these rules were imposed in the late 1800s, during a time when environmental preservation wasn't as widely adopted as it is today. So gold, osmeridium, gemstones and other valuable commodities can't be legally mined to be sold in Tasmania today. I hope you found this topic as interesting as I do, and as always, thanks for watching.